Today we're talking about something that's been plaguing builders for almost 500 years. Of course I'm talking about Cartesian coordinates and what we should call our axes. I'm thinking about Peter Jr. Video is sponsored by Maso, makers of the Maso CNC controller. Eight hardware and software package to run your machine with no PC required. Hello fellow CNC nuts and welcome. Today we're going to be talking about Cartesian coordinates and how they affect the naming of the axes on your machine. They've been around for almost 500 years, causing confusion for makers ever since. So to understand this, we need to go right back to the mists of ancient time uh, to when we were at school. And the teacher brings out a uh, piece of graph paper and draws a graph for us on it. And if you remember correctly, you'll remember that the x-axis went along the bottom from uh, left to right, and the y-axis uh, went from bottom to top. And that's the way it's always been. Of course, we forgot about it, who really cares? But, of course, now we own our own CNC machines, it's all important because we really need to know our X from our Y. So, if you're not sure which is which, the first thing you can do is go and look at the screen on your CNC controller software. It will have marked on it which the X is and which the Y. And they're all the same. X always goes left to right across the bottom and the Y goes from bottom to top. Just take a quick look. Here it is on Maso, UCC and C, and Mac 3. Still not convinced? Well, go and have a look at your CAD software. Again, you'll find exactly the same thing. X-axis across the bottom, Y-axis up the side. No? Well, check your CAM software as well. It's the same. Personally, I think it's a conspiracy, but you can't really fight it. We'll just have to live with it. So... How does this help us name our axes? Well, to understand that, we first need to take a stand. And by that, we need to figure out where we're going to stand in relation to our machine. Now, I could choose to run my machine from here, but only if I didn't have enough problems in my life. Now, this one's worse than the last location. I think I'll keep looking. Well, this is a definite improvement over the last location, but I still have this gantry moving backwards and forwards in front of me. It would be a real nuisance. Uh, now, this is much better. I can stand on solid ground in front of the machine. The axes will not get in the way. I can easily load material here. This is the ideal location from which to run the machine. And now that I know where I'm going to stand in relation to it, I can start naming the axes. So now let's look at the table from above. I'll mark on it where we're standing. So if we now compare it to our CNC controller software screen, we can see exactly which axis is the X and which is the Y. So once you realize that the view you see on the screen is effectively looking straight down on top of your table from where you're standing, it becomes obvious which is the x-axis and which is the y. Now, the penalty for getting the x and the y mixed up is what you machine will end up coming out on your tabletop at 90 degrees to what you expect to see it. Now, the next set things are critical as well. You need to know which is positive x, negative x, positive y, and negative y, because if you get these wrong, the penalty for that is what you are machining will come out mirrored. So let's go back to the view looking down on top of my table. In the bottom left, we have negative x and negative y. In the bottom right, we have positive x and negative y. In the top left, we have negative x and positive y. And in the top right, we have positive x and positive y. So you might be asking yourself, why do I need negative coordinates? Everything I draw is in the positive. 
Well, that's not quite true. If you were to set your spindle in the middle of the table or set your origin point in the center of your stock, then you are going to end up with negative coordinates. Everything in this quadrant will be negative, both your x and y. This quadrant here and the one over there will have uh, at least one axis in the negative and uh, only when you're in the top right hand corner will things be positive. It is important to understand what's going on there. Now the one axis we haven't looked at is this one here, the Z. It does our up and down and nobody ever seems to get confused about that one. Just important to note that when the axis moves up we are moving in the positive direction and uh, when we move down we're moving in the negative. And that's it. Cartesian coordinates in a nutshell. All that remains me to do is to thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to check out my website www.cncnuts.com And while you're at it, why not consider subscribing to this channel. Alright, well, until next time, thanks for watching guys. Cheers.